they finally released Attack on Titan, the last season, part last, of course, the last, which they're splitting up into multiple parts, which is, it tracks with the record. They always release the last, final, last part, last, final, last part, and it's just more and more. This last, final, part three of the last part has two parts, and they're waiting months to release the other part. Now, of course, let's, this has, they released about an hour of content, so you're basically getting three episodes in one kind of mini-movie form, so not as bad. But they literally said they're releasing the part after this in, like, a, in fall. It's, a uh, March. But either way, let's get into the analysis of this amazing episode. So, I'm so glad that they did not waste time. Attack of Titan likes wasting time on pointless flashbacks. It's not pointless flashbacks. Not pointless flashbacks, but like flashbacks that don't really progress the story. And it's like, cool, I'm kind of glad to get the information, but like we have to spend a whole episode on it. They didn't do it in this episode. So it's all plot progression, all story progression. Now, to get into this recap, we have to start where it kind of just shows where we left off. It reminds you where we left off, where the wrong wing has started and they're already kind of going on top of Marley. So it kind of shows the rumbling happening the people and it shows how cruel and how despicable this act is and that Aaron knows because it can be seen he's apologizing so much to the people this kid he saved from getting beat up in the streets that he knew he was gonna kill later and he's apologizing to them and it's like he has the self worlds to know that he's going to do this atrocity but he believes it is for the greater good and that's the thing about these things where it's like even though he acknowledges that it's going to be an atrocity, he feels like it has to be done to save the people he loves and to give them freedom, as they'll say throughout the episode. So that encompasses the first like 10 minutes, basically just showing the atrocities of the rumbling. Now, it goes to a scene where Arwen and Annie are kind of talking together, and it shows their love interest. Um, I just feel like... Maybe I'm dumb and, like, it's been showing for a bit, but, like, I feel like this is random. Like, I feel like this is just something that they're doing to, like, add flair to the story. And it's just, like, the world is dying. Like, are we have time to focus on a random love interest right now? Especially since Annie says that she decides she doesn't want to fight anymore. She's staying behind with, um, the two kids while Armin is going to fight. So, <sighs> I just feel like it's random. You might like it, honestly, but it's it's just so random. Please tell me in the comments if you think it's random or not, and if it's not, please tell me why. Continuing on, that kind of encompasses around the first 20 minutes. They are re trying to rebuild an aircraft, because that's what they were sailing to. The point, they were sailing to the city, and they were trying to breach it to steal an aircraft and, like, build it, and they would have to, like, stop the people, but... The rumbling kind of just made it vacant, so they didn't have to fight anyone. But the rumbling is coming slowly and steadily. So they actually get the aircraft done in time before the rumbling comes. But of course, magically, Flork is still alive. And he shoots the aircraft, the fuel part. Of course it's the fuel part. Couldn't have been anywhere else. Had to be the fuel part, but he's probably aiming there, you know what? It's fair. But like, when you're like dying and you're just like barely can hold up a gun, you're just like shaking. You just magically hit the full part, like, perfectly, and it's just interesting. But, you know, that makes it, that's the point of putting that scene in it. If it didn't hit the fuel part, it wouldn't lead to the drama that's unfolding where the rumbling is here. And then they realize it. So, Hanji does have her hero moment. She gets to go and stop. <laughs> I thought it was so stupid at first. I was like, okay, they're trying to buy time for the airship, and they have, like, a hundred colossal titan-sized titans coming. And they were like, who's going to basically sacrifice themselves to, to give them time? And first they were like, oh, Arwen's going to do it. And I was like, okay, that makes a little sense. But like, Arwen's like one. And maybe he's a little bit stronger and bigger than those. But he's like against Thalassin, so I don't know how much time that would give. And then it was like the armor titan. Reiner was going to sacrifice himself because they need Arwen to win. And it's valid. Then I was like, okay, you know, it's not as good, but I think he can pay some time. And then Hanji's like, nah, I'm gonna do it. No Titan powers, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna give you time. And I was like, <laughs> this is gonna be fun. She's gonna kill one and they're gonna burn her. <laughs> it was better than that. I actually was surprised, you know what, because she had two of those Titan destroying rockets, whatever it was. 
she was able to actually, and I, I didn't even actually realize this was pretty smart in them. Whenever she killed one, they would fall, and then they would just trip over it. I'm surprised they can climb mountains, but they can't climb each other. And they're just like, <clears throat> so they just fall on top of each other, and then they just keep falling on top of each other and then trample each other. It was, it was kind of funny. Not funny in Hanji's death. Funny how they're just like falling like dominoes. So they give her the time they need. They can only fuel it halfway. And now they're going in the air. So in the air, they're kind of discussing how they're going to win. How can they win? It's, it's, it's Aaron, and he has like an army. And he, even if he didn't have the army, he has the, col he has the founding titan when his past. So what they're going to do? So they said they want to talk to him first, but that's when Aaron actually summons them to his like world to talk to them. Basically saying, don't talk to me. I'm not going to change my mind. Because he can control all the Eldian and Titans, so they, they wonder why don't they control them and just win it. And then Reiner theorizes this because he wants them to stop him. Aaron kind of says it similar but not exactly. He basically said, I wanted your freedom. So if you choose to use your freedom to stop me, that's okay. But you can do whatever you want, I will not stop you. So it's not necessarily that they want him to stop him. It's just that he fought for their freedom, like a soldier. <laughs> and if they want to use that freedom that he gave them to kill him and stop him, then he is happy, he's okay with that. And if they don't, then he's going to continue his plan. And that's the only way he's going to go. So, so, since this is, so, so since this is like three episodes in one, the third part of the episode, because they split it into two, but it's like three episodes. It's, they kind of show the um, the families, the Eldian families of the soldier titans, like Reiner's parent, mother, and like and others. And they're kind of showing their regret, how they like sent their children off the war for like revenge and stuff. Even the commander acknowledges like, even if we win today, beating the Aaron and the Falling Titan, let's not continue the cycle of hate. So if we beat them today, we're not going to persecute, basically. We're not going to keep doing hate and the cycle goes forever. Because he acknowledged that they're the founding titan and those titans are coming because of all the hate and oppression they gave to them. So obviously the fleet fails because Aaron's actually controlling the beast titan. So he uses this sort of anti-aircraft. So they destroy a little bit of the army, but not enough. But they finally, the big ship finally comes and they finally go. And lo and behold... That's when they finally land on Eren, and then they start fighting, and they could, they try to take out the Beast Titan, which they do, quote unquote, they take him away from Eren. I don't know how that's going to be perceived, but they take it away from Eren, and now they're kind of just in this spot where they're like saying, please Eren, don't do this one last time, and then that's the end. So, that is wild. Honestly, this is a very good part. I'm so glad there was no fluff. It was pure plot. And of course, they're stretching this out, but I didn't. it didn't feel stretched out. It felt like this was a natural length. So, honestly, I'm excited for the, the part two. It's going to be months from now, and I'm really excited, but that was a recap and analysis. A little bit of analysis, because a full analysis would take much longer. But if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe, and um, I'll catch you in the next one, hopefully in the fall.